pie time, there's nothing like going into winter and having a really good hearty pie. So I want to show you a pie that we might do at Euro to try and just give it a little bit of a difference. And what I'm using, and if you're shopping for the meats when you're at your butcher, I'm using some venison that has just been cut into cubes, like that, just rough old cubes. Then I've got the leg meat from a duck, and the leg always has great flavour. If you are going to make a chicken pie, I would use thigh meat because that's where all the flavour is. And then here I've got, uh, you know, what's you know a lot of people sort of talk about now is the Wagyu, and this is the rump, so a lot cheaper cut. So Wagyu is, has been made famous in the area of Kobe in Japan, where they massage the cows, they play them opera, and they feed them sake and all these wonderful things. Now, we're now growing Wagyu in New Zealand, a place called First Light is doing it. And here I've just got some veal rump. So I get a pot on and I get some olive oil in there because the first thing I'm going to do is saute off the venison. And I want to season that before I do, so everything's going to get seasoned. Got some Murray River salt. Crunch that on there like that. The venison is um, going to cook a lot quicker than the other meats, so I'm going to seal that one off first. So then it goes. I'm not going to get tempted to turn it too quickly. And we'll just have a little peek. Turn one over and see we've got some colour on there. OK, so that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. I'm going to take that out. There we go, and I'm now ready to toss the duck around. And that goes. So I'm going to keep the venison separate from the other meats, because I'm going to put that into our ragu a lot later on. So that's going to uh, be set aside. Nadi, you had a question? Um, so you don't need to dredge any of the meat in flour or anything to... That's a very good question. Often we would dredge the, the meat in flour and that would thicken our sauce up, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that because I'm very conscious of people who are gluten-free now. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show you a way to thicken it right at the end that doesn't use flour. So if I had somebody come into the restaurant and say, hi, hey, I'm gluten-free, I could use the ragu mm -hmm. and then instead of putting it with pastry, I could put a mashed potato over the top of it, finish it under the grill. So I'm going to show you a different way to achieve that. OK, so that is sautéed off. And it goes, leaving behind that duck fat, and then I'm going to get in to there the rump, the Wagyu rump. This is the Rolls-Royce of beef. You know, this is, at the steakhouse, we serve a 200-gram Scotch fillet for $100. It's hugely expensive, but the flavour is very different to other meat. And you can see from the fat in there that that's coloured up very quickly, hasn't it? Yep. A lot quicker than the others did. Now, there's only one reason I'm doing these meats separately is because if I put them all in there at once, they'd end up stewing. Mm -hmm. They'd cool the pot down too quickly, and then I'd have stewed meat. You can see I've got some nice colour on all this meat, yep. which ultimately is going to be flavour at the end of the day in our pie. OK, so we've got some good colour on there. So there's our meat, ready to go. Now I've got some onion, which has just been finely chopped up. And I've got some carrots, not a lot. I don't want the carrot to be the big thing. I you know, just want that flavour to be coming in there. I've got some leeks, you know, leek and pie always goes really well. Now I've got a little bit of the minced garlic clove. I'm going to put some bay leaves in, but they're going to come out later. I'm going to search for them. I don't want to give somebody a bay leaf in there. Some rosemary, finely chopped up, and some finely chopped thyme. Just the leaves, not the stalks. And I've cut these herbs up extra fine because I don't want that look from Ray McVinnie when he's tasting it, right? Yeah. <laughs> and we're now going to add the meat back in. So there's our duck, veal, and wagyu gone in. Your favourite good red wine needs to go in. There's 300 mils, so it seems like a lot of wine, right? I need that to reduce down by half. So we're going to let that really leave that on a high heat. There are lots of different ways to make a pie. We could 
put the pie filling into a dish and then top it with mashed potato. We could top it with the pastry flowing over. But what I want to do is I actually want to serve our pie in a pastry case. So I have just a little spring mould like this and we have some puff pastry and I always look for puff pastry that's made with butter, not margarine or a, or a cheap fat. This is a good quality puff pastry. I'm just going to lay that in there. And because this is non-stick, I don't need to line it into all the corners. And there we go. Trim that up. Puff pastry puffs up, right? So I don't want the base of this to puff halfway up. So I've just got some grease proof there. And then I've got some rice. Could be beans, could be rice. You can even buy, you know, little marbles that are designed to do just this. But I am a poor chef. Rice does the trick. So there we go. Into the oven at 160 degrees. We'll have a look and see it's just browned up nicely around the edges there. It's been in for about 25 minutes. Carefully lift all your rice out. And I'm just going to pop that back in the oven for about another six minutes, probably, just to get a little bit more cooking on the bottom, because I don't want everybody to think, hey, we've got a raw base to it. So our ragu mix looks reduced down by half now. So I've got our veal stock, which I've heated up just a little bit so that I'm not putting cold stock in there, which will take a long time to, to reheat. That is going to cook for two and a half hours. So our ragu mix has been cooking away here. Everything's starting to get a little tender there. I've got the venison going in now. Now I've got some cranberries. They're going to go in there along with our port wine jelly. Our ragu is coming up to the boil now with our venison in there, our cranberries and our port wine jelly. We're just going to turn the heat down and let it tick away for another 45 minutes. So if we're making a pie and you're sitting in a restaurant and you've ordered it, I don't you just want you to get a pie. I want you to get something on the side as well. But, you know, we're coming into winter, so I'm going to put a little rosemary out of the garden and then I've got some sweets. I'm just going to drop them in there and I've just trimmed the ends off. There, just trim them off. Now, these are still good to eat when they're cooked. So I'm leaving just a little bit on because I kind of like that look and they'll be tasty. Cover them with water. Golden rule when cooking vegetables, if they grow under the ground, you start with cold water. If they grow above the ground, drop them into boiling water. So these little guys grow under the ground, like carrots and potatoes, so you always start them in cold water. OK, so I'm going to strain that off. And then I've got it into some ice water there. So while they're cooling down, it's just a case of rub a bit of the skin off. See, it just rubs off. Nice and easy. There we go. So our ragu mix has been cooking away here now for 45 minutes. And look how good that looks, doesn't it? Well, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to thicken it using the zantana, which is fermented cornstarch. Be very careful when you sprinkle this in. And it doesn't change the flavour at all, which is the great thing. Now, I want to show you another thing that we can do just to really improve this and make it even better. So I want you to come up and just taste it very quickly. And I don't really think we need to do anything to it. Mmm, yum. Mm. But if we just get a little bit of this good balsamic and just put a little bit of that in there and then just take a little bit of butter and just drop some in here and we're just richening this whole thing up. Now I want you to have another taste, and just tell me if you can taste the difference by doing that. Mm. Can you taste yep. the difference? Yes. Yep. With the balsamic the in there and a little bit of butter. Oh, yeah, yeah the mouth feels, feels a bit nine. different too. Mm. With the butter. Oh, oh that's, that's really good. good. OK, so it's now time to fill our pie mix. And I want to get plenty of the meat in there. A few cranberries to sit on top there. Just like that. Now, I want to put that in the oven for two or three minutes, OK? 
and then when I take it out, I'm even going to let it sit for a couple of minutes because it's always, you know, putting a pie mixture into a filling when I'm going to take that spring mould away is it, will it stay? Will it hang in there? By just letting it sit for a couple of minutes before you actually take it out and put it on the plate helps. Now we need something on the side of this pie. I've got some wild bacon. And whilst that bacon's cooking, I'm going to put our Swedes in here to start heating them up. And I've got some walnut pieces going in. And I've just got a little butter that's going to go in here, because that butter just coating the Swedes is going to give it a lovely glaze. And you can see that caramelization's coming up there. It's really starting to look good. And I've got some finely chopped parsley, which is just going to bring it all together here. And that looks good, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Here's our pie. Now, you just want to run your knife just around the edge here, just to be sure that, you know, it's not sticking anywhere. Moment of truth. Looking pretty good, huh? Yeah. That's pretty rustic. Start popping some of our sweet about. Now, this is just missing something, isn't it? It's just missing a little bit of colour. So what I've done is I've roasted some tomatoes. I mean, I've really roasted them, right? You know, they're almost completely collapsed because when I break this tomato and that juice of the tomato comes in here with the bacon and the walnuts and we eat it with the sweets, this whole thing is going to start to sing, I tell you. It's not a perfect tomato. It hasn't completed its life until it has a little truffle oil over the top. So, there are two things that are going to go on top. A drop of truffle oil, only a drop. Truffle oil is very strong. Just a little crunch of salt over the top and just a small drizzle of balsamic in there, which you'll just discover on the way. 